Good morning, guys. Here we've got another Mercedes 654 engine, E-Class. This is a 67 plate and the same knocking noise. But in this video, we're going to explain a bit more in detail as why these rocker arms wear down and which side wears down more. Right now, we're going to start the engine and listen to the noise. Start up, please. As you can hear, there's a deep knocking noise coming from the engine. Accelerate! Okay, switch it off. Now we're going to start dismantling it and bit by bit show you where we take off, what we do and what causes this knocking noise. Now, this is, I think, the 11th car that we're doing, a customer coming from YouTube. So we're getting a lot of views, of course, from these videos. A lot of calls saying my car's got the same problem. We just get customers to pop in, or if they're from far, we get their contact number. We give them a list of the parts that's required, where they can get the parts from. And as soon as they get the parts, we tell them to get in touch with us so we can arrange a day for them to bring it in. Now, some customers, they travel from far. Some customers from Southampton, some from Brighton. And because it's so far, we have to book them in and we get them to wait in our waiting area until their vehicle's done. And now we're going to start removing everything. Okay, guys, so we've had another one come in as well. Same issue. Now, we're going to get cracking on with both of them at the same time. Start the engine, please. Okay, switch it off. As you can see, customers got the parts from Mercedes, the gaskets, and uh, rocker arms, along with the hydraulic lifters, and injector copper washers. And as we've been doing these for a while now, we've come across that some of these rocker arms actually wear off the camshaft. And we get the customers to pick up the camshaft just in case once we start the job that the camshaft is there. If it needs to be replaced, we go ahead and replace it. If it doesn't need to be replaced, we don't even open the box so the customer can take it back, get their money back, and then save some money from there. Now, when taking these small plastic bits off, especially in the cold weather, right now it's around one and a half, two degrees, we've got to be extremely careful as it's easier to break in the cold weathers. So we're taking off this one. We've gone ahead and took off this one. We're slowly, slowly cracking on with both. Now we've got to get these small plastic tabs soaked in WD-40 as we don't want to break anything in the process and they are difficult to take out. Slowly, slowly. As you can see, perfect. Now, as you can see, we've taken out the wiring harness for the ECU that's on the air filter box. Remove the Torx 30 bolt there. I'm going to separate the wiring harness from the air filter box from the intake system. And then we will be going ahead. Now, we're doing the same on the other, other car. Removing the ECU wiring harness, preparing to take out the air filter box. And now we've taken it from there. Took off the intake pipe that goes into the turbo. It's got a Torx bolt there, which is held on and the DPF pressure sensor, it bolts onto, it bolts onto here, yeah. and then a breather pipe and the sensors along it as well. Now we've took off the wiring loom, covering and going around the rocker cover. Now we're slowly, slowly going to remove the injectors and get access to the rocker cover. I'm going to show you how to remove the fuel return pipes. Push the two tabs on the side down, lift it from the middle. Now we've gone ahead, remove the wiring harness completely, remove the injector fuel rail, injectors, open an access towards the rocker cover. Once we take off the rocker cover, we'll bring the engine to the timing mark, and then remove the camshafts. Now on this vehicle, we've also removed the wiring harness, opened up place to take out the injectors and the fuel rail, taken off the intake system on this side. Now when going ahead and do this job you need to take off this 
mount here. To take off this mount, you need to remove the Torx bolt here, Torx bolt here. That goes to the turbo. It's this, this pipe, oil feed. And you've got to take out the two bolts down there for the bracket. You've got to take off this EGR valve to allow clearance when taking the rocker cover out. And on the other car, we're just doing the same, taking off that side. And slowly, slowly, we're going ahead with both of the cars. Now we've taken off the rocker cover. Gonna use the crank pulley and the camshaft marks at the top. Bring the engine to timing, lock it, and then take it from there. Okay, now we've got the engine in the timing mark. And you can see, it shows the OT mark right there. As you can see, it's lining up here. Also lining up there and there. Now we will lock the gears at the back and the camshaft and remove the camshaft carrier complete. Okay, so we've taken out the camshafts and as we can notice, this one here, the rocker is worn and a few more on the exhaust side. But when we look at the intake side, they're all fairly good now most of these vehicles we have done it's always problem on the exhaust side and not one going wrong on the intake side the main reason for it all going wrong on the exhaust side is that there's too much pressure on the exhaust side this vehicle has two EGR valves so it has an EGR valve here one here it's got the DPF right here cat and it's too much pressure causing the rocker arms to fail now we inspected the camshaft on this vehicle for the exhaust side as that was the side that all the rocker arms are broken on and it's not that bad so we will be using the original camshafts and letting the customer take back the part he got so he'll be saving a bit of money from there as that is the most expensive part when going ahead with this job as we can see the new rocker arms they come with a barcode and the inner brand whereas the ones off the engine no barcode, no brand. So these are better quality, upgraded ones, which are called the ones that come original on the engine. They're not as good. And that's the main reason why they wear down so quick. Usually they wear down after the 100,000 mile mark, but we've seen it go at around 78, 80,000 miles, 90. The highest we've done was 190,000. So it all varies. So with this car here, we replaced the rockers and the hydraulic lifters. The cab shafts were good, they weren't too bad, so we won't be replacing them. We've tightened the bolts down to spec, which is six Newton meter and then 90 degrees. When putting the cab shafts back in place, you need to be extra careful, make sure the timing sits correctly. If the timing is out, it will give you an error, and then everything will be able to correct the error, correct the timing. We'll have to take it all off and come back to the stage. Now, we're going to close up this one slowly, slowly. Moving on to the other vehicle. We've rang the engine to timing. Bottom end and the camshafts. We're going to be disassembling the camshafts. Removing it. And then be checking the rocker arms. So, as you can see, we've removed the rocker arms, hydraulic lifters cleaning up the surface and prepare to fit in the new hydraulic lifters and the rocker arms now here we've got one of the 40 rocker arms as you can see how it's just playing around like this as again as I said previously on the other vehicle this is the exhaust side and the reason for this being, as I mentioned as well, is there's too much pressure on the exhaust side of this engine. Okay, now for the second vehicle, we replaced all the rocker arms and hydraulic lifters, cleaned up the surface. We've got the 
camshaft carriers, camshaft complete, it's all good. We'll be putting it back into its place. Okay, now we've closed up the rocker cover for this vehicle. Slowly putting the intake side of things together, injectors are in place. Then put the rest of the intake, air filter box, ECU. And then we'll be taking it from there, starting up the engine. Now onto the other vehicle. We've put the camshafts into place, tight into spec, six Newton meters, 90 degrees. And then slowly, slowly we'll be putting it back together as well. Okay, so we've got this Mercedes up and running. Sounds lovely now. No weird, unusual, strange knocking noises. And we're working on the other one. This one is also nearly finished. Putting everything back together making sure everything's in place and then we will be starting this up soon as well okay so we've got the second vehicle up and running as well sounds lovely no unusual strange knocking noises so today we've completed two of these we have now specialized in this job this is i think our 11th or 12th customer off of youtube and i'd say 14th or 15th car we've done in general with the same job we're happy to help people after they watch our videos because customers come in and they tell me what they've been quoted for the same job or they've been, they've been told that they need to replace the engine and the quotations are starting from minimum two and a half, three thousand pounds. But we tell we give the list to the customers, you get the parts, we tell them to get the camshaft as well just in case. If it's not needed, they return it, get their money back and they save a lot of money. Thank you for watching our videos today. I hope you have enjoyed. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you.